So overall, the iPhone 15 Pro is a pretty incremental update over last year's generation, even when it comes to the cameras. There is one absolutely insane new feature though, and that is Apple ProRes Log. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this pretty much makes the iPhone 15 Pro the best tool that you can buy right now for mobile filmmaking. So in this video, we're going to take a look at Apple ProRes Log, figure out just how good this actually is. And throughout this video, we're going to be comparing the iPhone 15 Pro's filmmaking capabilities to my more professional video cameras, and also to the Samsung Galaxy S20. Ultra. So if you're unfamiliar with what a log format is, it's basically a very flat color space. So what I mean by that is I'm shooting this video right now in something called S-Log3, which is Sony's uh, log profile for their more professional video cameras. And as you can see, it's very flat, it's very muted. And then afterwards, I grade that across and you're able to pull out some of the colors. So here is an example of a shot taken with the standard iPhone 15 Pro 24 millimeter lens in a standard picture profile. So as you can see, it definitely has that kind of standard Apple look. Uh, it does look great, it looks fine. I would say it does also look somewhat kind of artificial. You've got a lot of digital sharpness going on through the image and the colors are, they're kind of have like an HDR look. Apple does this thing where they kind of want everything to be of a, almost in a neutral exposure. It's not quite how things tend to look to the natural eye. And then this is a log shot from the same position. So it's the exact same shot, same lighting, same 24 millimeter lens, but this time we're shooting it in Apple ProRes Log. So first what we're gonna do here is we're gonna apply a correction LUT. So this is gonna bring it kind of in line to, uh, we call this a Rec 709 look. This is a technical term. It doesn't really mean a lot. Basically it's just looking more and more closer to a final image. And then again, the cool thing about this is that you can actually then apply a more creative grade over the top and you get something that actually looks entirely different, entirely stylized and looks absolutely fantastic. I think really this difference starts to kind of come alive when you have a look at these footages side by side. So on the left here is the standard iPhone video and then on the right is the graded and color corrected version of the Apple ProRes Log video and it is absolutely insane like this is the best footage I've ever seen coming from a smartphone as you can see uh, and it really does massively pop next to the kind of more standard sharpened and neutral color correction from Apple on the left so obviously everyone is not going to want to shoot log all the time on your phone and it's important to see how in terms of performance uh, the iPhone shoots video without shooting log like without always going for the best of the best and really the overwhelming news is that the iPhone is still leading the pack. The iPhone 15 Pro continues to kind of pretty much lead mobile videography, even for this sort of standard look. Its stabilization is still just kind of leaps and bounds ahead of any other competitors, really. There's not really a ton to say here other than it is just very good, very consistent, a very, very strong performer when it comes to video on your smartphone. I think there's definitely a lot of fair discussion as to what is the best camera manufacturer right now for smartphones when it comes to photography. I don't think Apple kind of leads the way necessarily necessarily within that, but I do think with video, it is out and ahead of the pack. So moving on to this ProRes log format, because as mentioned, this is where the iPhone camera goes from great to basically absolutely insane. I think one of the coolest things about this footage being a level up over the previous iPhone footage is that we start being able to use the iPhone as an actual creative tool for filmmaking. And one of my favorite ways to do this is actually to use it in really creative ways that actually fitting a camera might be a real challenge. So for example, something I just wouldn't be able to film at all would be this angle right here, taken off the top of my Eufy X8 Pro robot vacuum as it cleans my flat without me literally having to do anything. In fact, this entire sponsored segment is shot on the iPhone 15 Pro in ProRes Log. So if you're like me, you're probably quite busy, especially if you create content for a living. And I'm gonna be honest with you, the last thing I want to do in the day today is get my vacuum out and start hoovering my flat. That is where the Eufy X8 Pro comes in. This is absolutely not just like any robot vacuum though. It's extra powerful as it's powered by twin suction turbines and it has an active detail tangling roller brush. So if you happen to have a pet and have lots of pet hair lying around, this is gonna cause no problems for the Eufy X8 Pro. One thing that's just entirely crazy is the X8 Pro actually self empties. Let's be honest, I just didn't think that would ever be a thing. It's a hoover or a vacuum that actually self empties itself. Once it's done cleaning, it was gonna go back and kind of dock itself into its tower. And then basically what it does is you'll kind of hear it fire up for a couple of seconds and it almost like fires into the bag inside the tower. Meaning you don't actually need to empty anything for up to 45 days 
days, it's absolutely crazy. Once you load up the Eufy X8 Pro for the first time, you use their app to pair and configure your helper. Then it's gonna go around your flat or your house and actually create an AI map using their AI 2.0 mapping technology. And basically once it's done this, it's gonna create a floor plan for you of your space. And then you can basically choose and configure the zones, which type of cleaning you want for which. So you could say, all right, no, I don't need the kitchen done or I'm all, I want just mopping in the kitchen done and just hoovering done in the living room. This is one of those things that I didn't know how much it would help until I got one. The Eufy X8 Pro has added hours back into my day. If you feel like you need one of these in your life, I've dropped a link in the description. Thank you so much to Eufy for supporting the channel. There are, however, quite a few drawbacks to shooting in ProRes Log on a smartphone. The good news, though, is that most of them are entirely fixable. The first is, unfortunately, the size. By default, in the standard camera app, Apple allows you to shoot in only one kind of flavor of ProRes Log, and that is ProRes 422, and it results in extremely large file size. So just to give you a kind of example, the standard look out of your kind of standard camera app, if that is our baseline in terms of file size, an Apple ProRes Log file is 40 times larger than one of those files. That means for every minute filmed, it's roughly six gigabytes of footage. And let me tell you, that's gonna fill up your iPhone extremely quickly. In fact, it's so large, it's probably one of the main contributing factors right now as to why Apple is now allowing us to shoot directly onto an SSD. It's a really, really useful feature, but it's not kind of ideal for the casual user or whenever you're in a slightly more run and gun situation. So here is a solution for you. And they start with the Blackmagic Cam app. Anyone that's used DaVinci Resolve knows that Blackmagic makes some fantastic software and they do it a lot of the time for entirely free. The new Blackmagic Cam app is no different. It's a fantastic, fantastic resource. And it basically allows you to get a far more manual control over your iPhone camera than you would otherwise have with the standard camera app. I tend not to use these other applications. I like to shoot as much as possible in the native camera app, but this one is really an exception. And as mentioned, it is completely free. So what's fantastic about this camera app is if we open it up here, you can see that I've got it open. Um, I'm actually gonna go across to the settings application. Obviously there's a whole bunch of settings here. I'm only gonna focus on two right now. So we've got two options. So first of all is the color space. And you can see that we can change this from, as I mentioned earlier, Rec 709 we're going to stick to Apple Log HDR there. And we can also go into the codec settings and you can see that within the Blackmagic camera app, you can actually change to other flavors of ProRes Log. So I've been shooting a lot of what I'm shooting in ProRes LT, so 422 LT, which is roughly half the size uh, than the standard 422 HQ Apple ProRes that Apple kind of spits out the main default camera app. So you're literally saving 50% here. And another fantastic option is that you can actually shoot in what's called H.2 65, which is a massively compressed format. And this is roughly only three times larger than the kind of standard video with no prologue color profile on. So that is really, really space efficient. And from my testing, you can see here, so here is a clip uh, in ProRes 422 LT. So this is the one that's roughly half the size of standard ProRes. You can see that the quality is still absolutely fantastic. And then here is an H.265 version. And you, again, you can see you probably are losing a tiny bit of latitude in terms of the actual kind of customization and grading. But I would say this is dramatically worth it uh, in terms of a trade-off from file size. You're still getting a very nice softened look and being able to really manipulate the colors. This app is absolute gold. One of the absolute best things about shooting Apple Prologue on the iPhone 15 Pro is just how soft and dreamy these images look. I think by far and away, this is the closest the iPhone has ever been from a video perspective to looking like a far more expensive cinema camera. Another brilliant feature with the iPhone 15 Pro is obviously you have a spectrum of lenses and on the iPhone 15 Pro Max you have that uh, telephoto, the additional uh, 5x telephoto on the back of that camera. Apple ProRes Log looks fantastic in all of those focal lengths. I'm shooting on the 77mm on the iPhone 15 Pro a bunch and the results as you can see are just gorgeous. So obviously we've tested the iPhone 15 Pro and had a look at some of the footage, but how does it stack up compared to my Sony a7S III? So as I like to do, sometimes I've left the label off here so that you can't actually immediately tell which footage is which. So uh, this is already pre-grown 
graded and obviously you, you can see that this shot here looks absolutely beautiful and this is actually the iphone 15 pro shot obviously shot in apple log and graded and now this is the sony a7s3 and you can tell that the colors are probably a little bit more poppy i would say on the a7s3 but obviously you can tweak that in the grade i think overall the biggest differences here are that the a7s3 is definitely slightly softer the apple uh, iphone is a little bit sharper than the a7s3 footage and also it's clearly just far more dominant in low light the a7s3 is a fantastic low light camera anyway but the extra sensor size just does massively contribute here i also want to get an example of skin tones here so there's two shots here the iphone 15 pro is the shot on the right and then the sony a7s3 is the shot on the left um, you can immediately see that just the kind of characteristics are very different the iphone is certainly sharper again you can see the balances and difference in dynamic range i definitely prefer the look on the left you can see that the sensor size is certainly limiting in terms of latitude between the highlights on my face and the shadows in my shirt and obviously as the footage continues to get closer and closer you obviously do have to remember that you've got serious advantages to using the iphone camera over other cameras first of all is something i talked about earlier is that kind of getting creative shots another is the stabilization the stabilization is absolutely amazing on the iphone so you've got a shot by shot here so i actually think that i potentially underexposed this by mistake just a little bit in the blackmagic cam app it is uh, a little bit easy to just tap the wrong thing and it exposes for uh, the wrong scene but that is a shot with the iphone 15 pro and you can see this is the same shot i'm obviously walking on pebbles this is the a7s3 this time but you can see that the, the shot is far less usable because the stabilization is just nowhere near as good on the a7s3 it's kind of fine for static moves this is even with the active mode on sony a7s3 stabilization and it is far more jerky so i think you guys can agree with me this is the closest this footage has ever been like i was blown away at the quality of the footage compared to the sony a7s3 there were shots that are pretty much close if not indistinguishable between these two cameras it's absolutely insane and you guys know we had to compare this to the 8k footage coming out of the samsung galaxy s23 ultra all right so if you made it to this point in the video go ahead and let me know with a like or a comment down below in the description because this shot is going to blow everyone's mind i might get some serious samsung hate for it but the only thing i can tell you is that this is 8k video downsampled obviously to 4k for this timeline and then this is iPhone 15 Pro footage shot in ProRes. This is actually ProRes LT as well. So it obviously just shows you that you don't always need that maximum quality. But just look at how insane that footage is. Uh, it honestly could have come from a very professional grade camera. And this is shot on a phone absolutely mad we'll do the same sort of comparison here to show the kind of differences in skin reproduction and colors when kind of human faces are involved this one is certainly better i think this is definitely closer this one certainly isn't as black and white as to which one's which straight away but i do think the iphone is significantly better looks more high end for me you still get a lot of digital sharpness in the samsung image even in the 8k mode and you can just tell one looks really like it was from a smartphone and one actually looks lo more like it was just yeah from a slightly more high-end camera one more just because i'm enjoying these and i think it's an interesting exercise so again s23 footage here and i'm going to swap backwards and forwards a bit more rapidly on this one so you can kind of get more like a side-by-side -side experience you can see the difference here for me by far and away it's actually the sharpening like the sharpening all the stones the sharpening in the motion of the sea here the iphone footage is just a lot more subtle you do still have probably a little bit more sharpening than i would actually like in this one again there is a lot of details and i think the iphone is making up for the lack of sense of size with digital sharpening i think all smartphones do this for instance like that's what the s23 ultra is doing by far and away too much in my opinion but yeah still so impressive so there we have it while i'm not going to be throwing away any of my professional cameras i think what's fantastic is i actually can start thinking about using the iphone 15 pro in proper actual productions for clients without having to worry about quality it's absolutely amazing